Because you must have been pretty satisfied with that. You had to wait for your moments and pick them at the right time. Yeah, look, really, really happy with the result. Um, funny, football's a funny game because I thought the performance wasn't as good as the last three games, but the result was there. Um, and, and I think, you know, we, we worked a lot on the things we needed to in the short space of time. And you know, I think you saw a difference in attitude, personnel, um, but really pleased for the players who, who put in a really good effort tonight. Um, our game plans changed a little bit. I played with two tens or two eights. Um, against the victory side because of the way they, they, they defend. Um, but like I said, it was very tight, even at half-time. Um, we knew it was going to be a really tight game. It was just moments here and there that could decide it. And, um, you know, we needed to get the first one as well. And that's what we got. And then, you know, the subs came on and, and did well. And Bernie made a good forward run and, and finished the game off for us, basically. But another, another clean sheet, which, which I always like. You, you just touched on clean sheets there. What was the thinking with the change of well, for, you know, for, for me, there's always different reasons. It's, it's either tactical or it's, or it's uh, your form and, and, and things like that. And, you know, when you, when you play at this elite level, you know, you, you're always subject and, um, to, to your performance. And, and for me, Daniel Margush has been training really well. And uh, I wasn't overly happy with the last game, the way we considered goals. And at the end of the day, you know, it, it is my decision. And it's always a big one when you're changing goalkeepers. But it's always about the performance. And, and I thought Daniel was really good. He does, wasn't really tested tonight, but what he did do was give the back four a lot of confidence with his communication and his positioning um, and his game smarts. Do, do you think you'll stick with him going through the next couple of weeks at least? Look, he's, he's earned his place for the next game, you know, and, and, and that's, that's how it is. Um, you know, these games are coming thick and fast and, and like I said, he's deserved his chance today and, and he deserves to, to be there again. Yeah, this is probably our biggest result. Um, like I said, the last two games, you know, we, it was just mistakes that cost us against teams that were running one and two in, in, the, in the table, right? So you could understand that as well. But against this, another quality outfit, you know, a, a lot of people have, have made them favourites for a reason. And they won, you know, the first trophy on, on offer only a couple of weeks ago. So, you know, we, we, you know, on the back of us losing the last two games too. So there's a, there's a lot riding on tonight's result. And, you know, like I, like I said, I was really, 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 really happy with um, their output, you know, and their effort. Even when they went 2-0 up, you can see the boys were really hungry. They were chasing back, you know, players you, who you probably don't think have got that in them or, or are more, they're more known for their technical ability, like James Truisi and Dimi Petrados and these sort of guys. They, they put an absolute shift off the ball as well. They, they, they really worked hard and, and so did the subs that came. Everyone did. Um, on Paramount Roos, the, the top three of the Alex Tobin medal tonight were, were Kankar, Russell and Gordon. They're, they're three blokes who just weren't getting a look in this season under the previous coach. So you've come in and you promoted three guys like that. You've obviously played well. So are you, are you a little bit, I guess, surprised at how the squad has been used for the, for the previous part of the season? Because you've obviously got some you know, differences of opinion to the previous coach in terms of players. Yeah, it's all, it's always subjective, that kind of thing. And, and, you know, what you see, Vince, and what I see, it could also be different. So it, it's, it's, got, it's got nothing to do with what the last manager saw and did. And, you know, my job was to, to come in, um, you know, on my own, basically, and, and work with what I have, which includes everybody at, at the club, staff and players. But we all see things differently. And, 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 and those decisions were based on different reasons. Um, but what I, what was what pleased me uh, wasn't just those players. You know, you got to be, you have to be ready as well. And you know, there were different, there's so many different things that I had to assess kind of when I came in. And, and one of it is their fitness levels and and how they are mentally, technically, and, and tactically. And that still takes time. Um, but yeah, all, all three of those that you mentioned, um, again, even the three two ones are subjective too, Vince, as you know, right? But. Um, yeah, they, they were all very good, but I, I had 11 players out there that could have shared those points if, 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 if that's important, but it's not for me and, it, and it's not for them either because it's always about the collective. But those, those guys, I mean, I was really, you know, I don't like pinpointing or isolating anyone, but I thought Kanko, you know, I, I thought 
he was so composed for his debut for a young guy and he's someone that caught my eye and has a lot of attributes that I like in, in that position and you know I think he deserves a bit of a, a mention and he's so low key and I can I can I can actually talk about him because I know that it wouldn't bother him and that's just got the kind of guy he is and he's got an interesting story behind him too and you know like they all have but he's you know he's made us some some stern stuff and he done well but he needs to needs to keep his foot in the ground like he will and and just keep going yeah and just finally for me roots i mean a little bit bigger picture but you know it wasn't very long ago that this fixture wanderers versus victory was was enormous you'd have 15 20 000 people no problems now obviously there's circumstances around tonight it's a wednesday night there's a reason for that with COVID and all that yeah we've dropped off a long way what do you think yeah has to happen like wins alone for the wanderers obviously aren't going to do it just uh, based on the sentiment for the supporters at the moment what's your what's your vibe on that and how we get the, the glory days back yeah, look, I'm a bigger picture person too. I, you know, you know, and and I'm not different to you. And and I see not not just tonight's fixture, but maybe the whole league have got to to talk about and communicate about how we can get fans back in and and how we can build this game. You know, in all aspects of it, it's a game that that keeps us employed. It's a game that we all love, whether you're you know involved in the football club or you're a fan and. You know, there's there's a lot of things there. I mean, even when I wasn't working, um, I didn't know too much about the games. Um, you know, a lot of good mates of mine were the same. But like I said, it's it's something that I hear all the time. It's not really my department, Vince, in terms of how we how we get get all those messages out. But certainly from my point of view and and my football club, you know, and I've said this before, this is an area, and the fans just want a team first and foremost that are going to represent them. And 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 then you know and and once you have that solid base, you know the the wins and then the results start to come, and then and hopefully, hopefully things progress. But you know everyone says for a strong league you need a strong victory and a, and a, and a Wanderers. But I, I I get that sentiment, but I think you need everybody to lift and everybody to, you know you've got two teams who are playing outside of their cities and states, which must be difficult for them. But yeah, I think there's a holistic approach here that 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 needs questioning, and and I think it's important that if we all reflect on on our own positions, I think everybody needs to do the same across the board, um, and and I think that's going to be important going forward as well. I mean, we know how limited we are, but in, in terms of coverage, let's say, I mean, you know, you used to sit down and share, you know, a seat at a, at a venue with others from different companies and different organisations and, and that's been shut off somewhat as well. So we can only just keep chipping away and, and make sure that we, we can put on a good product and, and the fans, you know, start turning up. But like I said, um, I'm not the guy that can make those decisions. Thanks, Ruth. Thanks, Vinny. Just one for me. Um, you've obviously had four, four games in charge now, all at home. Have you seen enough um, enough positives from these games as you um, have another short turnaround and some more games on the road now? Yeah, I have, and I said that in the first three games, you know, or it, particularly when, when you look at the statistics and, and people can look at a scoreboard and, and, and maybe be lazy and say, oh, you lost because of this reason or whatever. I, I, I've, again, bigger picture for me in terms of the players, we've asked from the players and what we've been working on the training ground. I've been seeing it. And like I said, if it wasn't for a couple of little mistakes here and there from set pieces, as you mentioned, and we've worked extremely hard on, on, on that area as well, I, I think we're in a good position. But it, it's been a pretty tough ride because you look at the last three opponents who are all there, thereabouts, and, and, and are challenging. It's, it's, it makes it even more difficult, irrespective of where you play, Carly. So I think tonight was more about... about um, you know, believing in ourselves and, and and getting that win for the for the fans and for the football club because everyone will tell you that that just brings a whole different dimension to everybody that works at the club who works really hard at the club as well. And I think that was most important was the result. I think the like I said, the performance I didn't think was as good as the last three games. Um, and I'll have to look at the statistics on that as well. But what was, what was important was the win. And and a lot of people and you you can bandage a lot of other issues with a, with a win. But that's not how I look at the game, and 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 like I said, my the principles of play and, and the style that I want to play, you know, it's gonna it's gonna take time, you know, particularly when, 
you know you 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 have a squad in front of you and and, and you got to and you work with with them um and that's not always easy like i said